Hotel World. This is your brother Matthew Daniels, aka M. Pooh, aka The Chosen Few, aka The Real Bookworm. I'm not a bookworm, I'm the real bookworm. Make sure you get it right. And as always, world, may your name live on forever and may your memory never die. Hotel, cheers to that. Um, I got a question, right? And this is something that I have been um, mauling around in my own head for quite some time now. But I want to present it to you guys and I want to see if I can get some feedback and get some understanding about what do you guys think. Um, are the African-Americans a new people? And I'm saying that in a sense of are the African-Americans a new people? A new people with a glorious and ancient past. Right. Of course, we understand that our bloodline descends from the um, continent of Africa. Right. But as us now in America, after what we have gone through with the institution of slavery and subsequently everything that has happened since then, are we a new people? And I'm going to I'm going to tell you why I ask that. I'm real big on history. Right. So you can imagine one of the things that I did is I did my DNA test. OK. And so my DNA test traced my um, um the majority of my bloodline lineage back to um, Central Africa in the Congo. OK. And so um, I, I was ecstatic when, when I when I found that out. And so what I did, I started buying books and I started reading about um um, the ancient kingdom of Congo, the, the records are scarce, but I started reading about the ancient kingdom of Congo and I started reading about the kings and I started reading about when the Portuguese came and how they accepted Christianity and some of the civil wars that they had, um, what, what, what the kingdom looked like, how, um, how the army, um, um, how the, the, the army of the kingdom was organized, um, their style of dress, what they ate, the animals, the um, what their houses looked like, um, what their beliefs were, what their language was, what the migration history of the Congo was. And I did all of this massive research and I filled my brain up with information about the Congo. But again, I like to study history. And so it's one thing that I, I know that I'm pretty sure that the majority of my viewers are aware of because you guys are intelligent as well. Every African-American um, does not descend from someone who came from Central Africa in the Congo, right? There were um, tribes in the Congo that were... Um, um, victimized by the transatlantic slave trade there were um members of like the fulani tribe the the ashanti tribe right the the igbo tribe people came from the the um 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 the area of nigeria the area of ghana the area of mali and some of these are generally in the same area but they're not all the exact same kingdom um they came from or we came from a lot of different places, okay? And what happened was during during the time of the transatlantic slave trade, there were Africans taken from many different, what they're calling tribes, but from many different nations and were brought over to these shores. And once they were brought here, they began to mix with each other and with Europeans, and with the Native Americans, right? Um, you can read a good book. Um, it's called The Story of the Negro by um, Booker T. Washington. And he thoroughly documents how um, the Africans, right, um, mixed with the Indians, the Native Americans, and due to um, um, rape, right, from the, 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 the slave and the slave master, um, we also mixed with the Europeans, so we mixed with the Irish, we mixed with the British, we mixed with the French, we mixed with the Portuguese, we mixed with the Cherokee, we mixed with the Seminole, we mixed with the Sioux, okay, and Congolese mixed with um, Igbo, Igbo mixed with people who came from the area of Nigeria, the people who came from the area of Nigeria mixed with the people who came from the area of Ghana, 
people who came from the area of Ghana mixed with people who came from the Fulani tribe, people who came from the Fulani tribe mixed with people who came from the Ashanti tribe. You, you understand what I'm saying? And the bloodlines were all mixed and matched. It was like everything was thrown into one big pot and stirred up and mixed up. Even, even me, myself, even though the majority of my bloodline talked me distinctly back to Central Africa and the Congo, about 12% of my DNA, my, my, my bloodline, traces me back to uh, Great Britain, in, in, England. You understand what I'm saying? Trace me back to England. So if... If whenever African American does a DNA test, majority of the time they are going to find a lot of different things in there. So even before the African American came here, right, they were not one particular nation. It wasn't like the European went to the Congo and just snatched up um, individuals from the Congo and brought them over here. And then we are the people from the Congo. OK, as I just stated, we were taken from many different places and we were brought here and we were we were mixed and matched. And our our blood. Right. Is, is, is so heavily mixed and matched to what sometimes it may be indistinguishable with like who's who. Because if you take someone that was expressly from the Congo and that's where their bloodline was from. And then you take someone who um, was a Cherokee, a Native American Cherokee. And then they had a child, then that child technically is neither Congolese nor Cherokee. They are a mix of the two. And then if that child who is a mix of the two um, um, has a child with someone who is a mix of Fulani and Igbo, right? Now that child is neither Fulani nor Igbo. They are in essence mixed. And then that mixed child has a baby with another mixed child. Then what is that child? And so in my mind, it, it, it it's, it's almost foolish to to for the African American to try to expressly um, identify with one specific culture and one specific nation in Africa. I think it's a, I think it's an impossibility at this point. So that's what I say about are we a new people, right? Um, not so much as a new people, as in we never existed on the planet, but a new people in a sense of we are an amalgamation of so many other different nations and tribes that never are amalgamated but before, right? If you would go to the Congo, the individuals in the Congo now, even though that's where um, my descendants, my, my ancestors rather come from, genetically, we're, we're, we're not really a mix. And i I don't believe that I could just get up today and actually move to the Congo and fit in distinctly with that culture. I've been I've been totally Americanized. You know what I mean? Like this is this is where I was born. This is where my father was born. This is where my father's father was born. This is where my father, 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 father was born. I've actually traced my family tree back uh, up until this point to like 1848. So I've gone all the way back to 1848 of descendants being right here on these shores. And so I was, I was wondering if, um, well, what, what, what do you guys think? You know, because I, you know, I can understand that my DNA comes from the Congo, true enough. I can understand that ultimately my bloodline comes from Africa. I am an African, right? Ultimately. But if I was to look at what would I call myself, would I call myself a Congolese? You know, and if I do, if my mother does her DNA, um, um, my mother does her DNA test, the majority of her DNA doesn't even go back to the Congo. So now am I saying I'm different from my mother? It's ludicrous to me. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. If my mother said that, oh, she comes from Nigeria, the area of Nigeria. And I'm like, oh, I'm Congolese. How are me and my mother two different nations? And I come directly from my mother. And then if I say if I'm primarily what my mother is, then how am I different from my father? How am I different nation from my father? Ultimately, we are the same. We are the same. And we have a common ancestor, ancestry starting point together. But are we not distinctly different? And that's the that's the thing that I need. I think we need to start considering. Right. And um, not only do I think we need to start considering that is I, I personally feel like we need a name. You know, we need a name that is specific to the nation of people that we are. We, we're American. 
right? You aren't going to get away from that. You know, you know, I know I've some people, especially um, people of my nation, people of my, um, um, my ethnicity, whatever you want to call it. That, that's why, that's why it's so weird. You know, it's, it, it's weird when, when an African-American even has these types of conversations, because what am I going to say? Uh, when a, a black person, you know, uh, most black people, um, we, we don't like uh, 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 the history of America. So at some points we try to disassociate ourselves with America. But then it's some of our people who, who are proud Americans. You know, our, our ancestors fought in every single war. But when we contemplate what happened with slavery, we, uh, we, we, we get a bad taste in our mouth about America. But you're not going to get around it. You're American. You're an American because you're here. And the thing is, America is a place that we actually fit in because America is made up of many different national identities all coming together under this banner of American. Right. You have people from all over the world who live and exist and have cultures here. You have Jewish cultures. You have um, Irish cultures. You have people from um, Europe. You have people from Portugal. You have people from Britain. You have people from um, um, Italy, right? You have people from Mexico. You have people from Guatemala. You have people from Venezuela. You have people from Honduras. You have people from Peru, right? You have people from Canada. You have, you have small groups, but you have people from Russia. You have, uh, uh, um, you have people who identify as Moorish Americans. Now, these are what the, the general population, we would probably try to identify them as black or as African-Americans, but they self-identify themselves as being Moorish. They're Moorish Americans. And I believe that they have every right in the world to self-identify themselves however they see fit. Why let someone else name you, name yourself? You know, and I think that's, that's one of the um, issues. And so I think one of the people... um that I look up to the most in my history is Booker T. Washington. You know what I mean? And I'll do another video explaining that later, but it just goes to the, 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 the change in mind state of the African-American of people like myself. Um, his work, the story of the Negro was in essence telling the history of his people, which I am ultimately a part and you see how he calls it the story of the Negro because Booker T. Washington, he was born um, enslaved. He got his freedom with the Civil War and he subsequently passed away somewhere around like 1915. And But when he wrote his work, he wrote it as the story of the Negro because we have had several names, right? We've been colored. We've been black. We've been nigger. We've been Negro. We've been African-American. We've been Afro-American. Right. We we've had so many different um, um, names applied to us because it's a it's a it's, it's a natural fact of reality of creation. Whenever something for something to exist, that something must have a name. Right. When things come into existence, they must have a name. These things must be named. Right. It just is what it is. The tree, you, you need the name for the tree. The tree will exist without the name. But in order for um, human beings to can really conceptualize and for this thing to actually be grafted into reality in the mind of man, these things need names. That's why we, whenever they find a new planet, they name it. Whenever they find a new star, they name it. Whenever there's a new species of insect found, they name it. Whenever there's a new um, 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 environmental um, 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 catastrophe that, that, have, that they name the storms. Right. Volcanoes, they, they give them names, land masses, continents. They give them names, oceans, lakes. They give them names, birds. They give them specific types of names. Everything needs a name. And so when you have a situation to where something is new, a group of people is new, that group of people needs a name. And so our name has changed. And I think that um, primarily we need we need to name ourselves if i had a big enough platform and if i had enough influence if i was rich enough or something like that i would basically you know put it to a vote you th throw a pool out there i would just ask okay everybody who's an african-american who is a foundational black american how um my boy tariq nashi says this ados american descendant of slave whatever you want to say us we know who we're talking about there's just no specific name 
other than African American that I'm fine with, but I want something better, right? Something more unique. I want that. So um, what I would do is I would have like a contest to where any and everybody could submit a name, right? Now, then I would take it to maybe like the top 10, whichever name was submitted the most, then we would take those 10 names and then we would put them out to a vote, right? And everybody who votes is willing to agree on what name is agreed upon, then that is the name that we would classify ourselves as, right? Whatever name we have, we agree to that name and then we apply our culture to that name. Then we apply a history to that name, a history that is specific to us and what we went through. Yes, we came from many different places in Africa, but now we are a descendant of an amalgamation of tribes who have a specific and unique and common history and experience here in America. And this is what we have went through. And this is what we are. And this name represents that. And then it is under that name that we can we can move we can move forward. But what, I'm I'm curious. What 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 do you guys think? Do you guys think that we are actually a new person or, or a new people, a new people with an ancient past, right? But a new people nonetheless. And I, I know some people um they 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 may misunderstand what I'm saying. They may want to say, well, how are we a new people? But when we've always been here, we came from somewhere. Our history didn't start with slavery. I get it. But again, I study history. So I want you to think about something. Um, let's take the Egyptian people, right? Th those people existed before they called themselves Egypt. Now, actually, Egypt is another name for it. They called themselves the Remets. And at one point they called the nation Tymeria and they called it Kemet. But just for um, um, the sake of the conversation with where most of us are at, let's talk about the Egyptian. The people who created the Egyptian society existed before the name. Right. And they existed before the nation and they existed before the culture. But at some point, that group of people identified themselves as this and they built this particular culture. Right. Let's talk about the um, the Sumerians. Those people already people already existed. We just a human. It, it, everybody is a human. We're one human family. We're one human race. So if 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 you can't understand how we can be a new people ideologically, even though we have an ancient past, then really nobody is anything. There is no American. There is no Mexican. There is no Britain. There is no Portuguese. Right. There is no Russian. There is no German. There is none of that. There is none of that. There is no Jew. There is none of that. But if an ancient people can assume on a new name and a new identity other than what they were known from known for before, then that thing can be done again. And I think we are at a point in history where it would behoove us to focus on a name. Right. To focus on a name. And then it I, I think a lot of our endeavors, a lot of our endeavors would would gain a lot more traction and a lot more a lot more push if we was like we're 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 Americans, but we are this, and this encapsulates everything that we have been through, and we can look across the board and understand that we are the same. Not that we're the same because we're black. Not that we're the same just because of slavery, you know, not not that. But we are a family known by this. And we subsequently began to do like what Booker T. Washington did. We create our history. Right. And within our history, we create our 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 iconic figures. Right. And we we all agree on these iconic figures and we all agree on what do we eat? How do we dress? What moral standards do we abide by to ensure that whatever we went through in the past, we will never go through that again, right? And so I'm going to start doing some more videos because I've been doing a lot of thinking about this. And I understand that, in my opinion, and I could be wrong. That's why I want to put this video out there. You could disagree with me, you know what I mean? Because that's, 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 that's another problem. All of that, you know, looking for a leader. 
We got to throw that out the window, looking for a king, throw that out the window, you know, looking for somebody to tell us what's right for us. We got to throw that out the window, right? Primarily, I think that um, the majority of people should have a say in what's good for the collective. But then a lot of times, right, you, you, you have to have the people that's qualified to answer certain questions, answer certain questions. OK, I, I do not want a, a expert car mechanic to give me brain surgery. I, I don't care how good you are working on a car. Right. I want the individual that's trained to um, do the brain surgery. So it, so at some point, too, we have to start looking at who are the experts in their fields at answering certain questions and solving certain problems and just acquiescing to the answers that they give and stop arguing and stop debating and stop thinking that we we know better. You know, uh, uh, if an astrophysicist who have been trained in this field and is studied in this field is telling us something about the nature of the universe. And just because we can't understand it, we argue against it. That's that's not that's not how you do things. And that's that's not how you progress. We gotta, we gotta just let that go. So I'm not trying to say that. I think everyone should just listen to me and take my word for it and do everything that I'm saying, because I could be totally off the mark. Right. A uh, 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 individual with an actual degree in history may may say that, hey, real bookworm, you are totally um, you are totally wrong. Your, your understanding and conceptualization of history is totally wrong. This whole concept of we are a new people is, is flawed. These are the reasons. This is why it won't help. And this is how we should move forward. And I would acquiesce to the individual who is qualified to give those answers. I'm just I'm just presenting um, my thoughts about it. But I'm going to tell you this. Like I say, I'm going to be doing some more videos. I I want to tell you all something. Now, hit, hit me good when I say this and understand me. Right. You can't change history. Because history is written in stone. It's done. It's there. It can be studied. It can be researched. It can be looked at. You can't change it. Now, what you can do is change your perception of it. A lot of times, especially with us, we look at our history and our history of enslavement and in our subconscious, our interpretation of that is so bad that we don't even realize it. But deep down, we don't even like ourselves. You know, we we. We hate ourselves. I remember being in school and um, I remember making hundreds on tests and I remember making straight A's. Right. And the the weirdest thing is that. It seemed odd, more odd that I was able to make hundreds on tests because I was a black kid. You know what I'm saying? Like psychologically and subconsciously, everybody was already trying to believe that the African-American was so poor intellectually. And so whenever an African-American showed signs of high intelligence, it was like a more of a, a R factor. Whereas if it was a it was a white kid and they were they were making straight A's and make, and, and doing good, it was seen as normal. And then if you saw one white kid and they, they were failing everything out, the, the white kid failure was the anomaly. And the black child success prodigy was the anomaly, right? So that shows you the psychological thinking that's already was implanted into the young minds of me and a lot of my classmates. And we, they may not have realized it. I realized it because I lived it. You understand what I'm saying? Because the subconscious psychological mind had already assumed that the black child should not be as intelligent as the white. And the white child should be more intelligent than the black. So when you saw a black child as intelligent and more intelligent than a white child, it was an anomaly. But And when you saw a white child that was less intelligent as the black kids, that was seen as the anomaly. That was seen out of the norm. You know, oh, it's not normal for a white kid to be failing. And oh, it's not normal for a black kid to be passing. Right? With, with straight A's. And so that, that shows you how these things get implanted into our minds so easily. You know, you, you can't even remember when it was when it when it was first um um when it was first given to you, but a lot of it is your interpretation of history.
And so what one would have to do, one would have to look in history, right? And not, you can't change history, but you can change your interpretation of history, right? To make what you went through more favorable in your eyes and look at the strength of your ancestors, right? Instead of seeing, oh, my ancestors were enslaved and subconsciously associating them with being weak because they didn't fight to the debt. Right. Or they didn't fight to the death in Africa. They was allowed to come over here and allowed to be enslaved. So they were weaker than their enslaver. That is going to subconsciously be implanted into your mind as opposed to looking at the strength of your and interpreting it as the strength of your ancestors for being able to survive what they went through, survive long enough for you to get where you got to. And you can look at yourself as you come from a descendant. Of some of the most, the, some of the strongest people on the face of the planet that have ever lived because they went through conditions more horrendous than anyone else on the planet. Because what you got to understand is just, it's weaponry. It doesn't have anything to do with, with, with intelligent or unintelligent or strong or weak. It's weaponry. If, if I got a gun, right? If I got a gun and my, my, my friend got a gun and my friend over here got a gun, you could build bodies, build a bench pressing 450. You will submit. You have no choice but to submit. You either submit or die. And then once you don't submit and you die, the people behind you, they're going to naturally submit because my I'm more successful at warfare than you. Right. So we have to understand the level of scientific technology. Right. The, 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 the level of scientific breakthroughs in matters of warfare at that particular time in history, when the transatlantic slave trade went on, the European was leaps and bounds ahead of the African in terms of warfare. OK, and when you have better weapons, you win the war. It's, it's nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. it, it you know what I'm saying? It, 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 if you are intelligent, the only way that your intelligence will help you is you must figure out a way to defeat the technological advances of your enemy. And if you can't beat the technological advances of your enemy, then you are going to lose. So you got to look at it like that. It was just a matter of the, the manner in which the war was waged. We lost, right? Plain and simple. But History can't change. You can't go back and change slavery, but your interpretation of it, instead of looking at your ancestors as being weak, you look at your ancestors as being strong because they had the heart and the power and the will to survive and endure something that nobody else on the planet could endure. That in fact, other people on the planet would have, would have, would have they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have made it. They, they, they would have died under the pressure physically. Physically, they couldn't take it. Um, Booker T. Washington in Story of the Negro, he documents that as well. Um, a lot of the reasons why the African-American was um, enslaved to the degree that they were enslaved in the Americas is because the white man and the, um, and, and the, well, the European and the Native American, they could not do it. They, they, they were out there in those harsh environments and they were dying. They were succumbing to sicknesses. And they weren't recovering from the sicknesses and they were dying. And when they were out there in the sun, the sun was beating them, beating them up. You know what I mean? And they, they could not, they could not take that environment and they could not take that work toil, the amount of work out there in the elements that it took to build America. The only people on the planet that was capable of doing it was you. Right? Our descendants, I mean, our ancestors. So that's what you have to understand. This nation would not exist without our ancestors. Not simply because they did the work, but because no one else could do the work. Because they tried and they failed. They tried and they died. They got sick and they died. It, he even tells a story of a plague broke out in like Pennsylvania, right? A plague broke out in Pennsylvania. And for whatever reason... The um, African-Americans weren't as acceptable to the plague as everybody else. So even the doctors and nurses, they couldn't even go into this infected area. People were just left to die. They were just left to die in their home. Nobody was dealing with them. And so they got the African-Americans to go in, right, clean up the bodies, 
put, uh, uh, work as doctors and nurses to heal these people, et cetera, et cetera. Because it was something about their genetic makeup to where they weren't immune. He didn't say that they were immune to this plague, but it didn't affect them like it affected everybody else. So, so, so even with that, even with that, when this, when this, when this, when this plague hit, it was something about your ancestors to where they were able to survive in situations, right? Physically tasking, right? When others could not. You can't change history. You can change your interpretation of history. And you always change your interpretation of history to make it more favorable to you. That way, you will see value and pride and you will honor yourself and you will respect yourself. Because yes, one, one of the reasons why we always want to look back to um, what we were doing in Africa is because we had great empires in Africa. And we lean on those great empires in Africa because a person needs to see greatness within themselves in order to achieve greatness in the future and in the present. So that is one of the thinkings of why the African-American didn't know it, why the African-American looks back to Africa in the first place, because they are looking for greatness and they are looking for glory. But you're not going to be able to just skip over that slavery thing. That's a big problem. And it affects us right now because we can't change it. And our interpretation of it is bad. So we have to change our interpretation of slavery, too. Yes, we need to look back to the African continent and understand our ancestral roots. But we also need to change our interpretation of what happened while we were in slavery. And we need to look at it in a more favorable light. Not that slavery was good, but we have to look at something in it that we can glean so we won't look like the downtrodden, cursed of the earth. Right. And then we can start assessing who we are as a people right now today. OK, now this all may be a pipe dream and we all may not never agree. And I don't even think we all need to agree. You know, it could just be a certain amount of people in, in, in my area. We, we just agree that, you know what, this is who we are. This is our agreed upon history. And then it could be somebody like myself. Write that history. Carry on the work of the great scribe, Booker T. Washington, the story of the Negro. He died in 1915. It's been like 100 years. I need to write volume two. I need to write section two. But instead of the story of the Negro, the story of whatever name that we come up with. And then that those books be in the houses of our people and we read them. You know, we read them when, when we get together for our holidays. We talk about them. We talk about our history. We reinforce it. We make sure that we are thinking on the same path with one mind, one goal, one aim. And, you know, we don't have to stop being Americans. We can't stop being Americans. We're here. But everybody has their culture. That's the beauty of America. Everybody has their culture while simultaneously being an American, right? You got, like I said, you got the Moorish Americans, you got the Jewish Americans, you got the Mexican Americans, you got the Irish Americans, right? You, you got everybody from all over the world, Japanese Americans, right? All from Africa. They all come from Africa right now. Nigerian American, Senegalese American, Ghanaian American. They're all coming over here, right? Who are we? So let me know.